Hello, my name is Anna Caputo, and I am an AmeriCorps member with the New Jersey Watershed Ambassador Program. We are an AmeriCorps program in collaboration with the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection, or the DEP, and we educate on watersheds, stormwater runoff, water quality, things of that nature. We also do community-based stewardship projects throughout the state. But one of the things that we do, and my favorite part of the position, is we go out and we collect water quality data along the streams and rivers throughout New Jersey, looking at freshwater benthic macroinvertebrates to determine stream health. So today I want to talk about one of my favorite macroinvertebrates, which is the Tricoptera or the order of caddisflies. Specifically, we are going to be talking about the net spinning caddisflies. So here is a caddisfly larva squirming around. These guys are arthropods, which means they have segmented legs and hard exoskeletons. So that's the same family group as insects, spiders, and crabs. Below that family group, they are Tricoptera or the order of caddisflies. Tricoptera is actually the sister order to Lepidoptera, which you guys might know as butterflies and moths. The word Tricoptera comes from the Greek trico, meaning hairy, and terra, meaning wings. So if you put that together, Tricoptera means hairy wings. And if you compare Lepidoptera, the butterflies and moths, to Tricoptera, in, in their adult form, you look at their wings, Lepidoptera have these scaly wings, which is why if you've ever touched the wing of a butterfly or a moth and there's that residue, that's all the scales from their wings that are coming off. Caddisflies are homometabolous, which means they go through a complete metamorphosis. So they're defined by having aquatic pupa and larva, which breathe with gills and freshwater streams and brooks and freshwater bodies in general, and eventually change or metamorphose into a terrestrial adult form, which breathes air with lungs and has wings, which are used for aerial flights. Now, what I really want to focus on is their larval form. There are two different groups that we put them into. So there's the case-building caddisflies, and then there are the net-spinning caddisflies, or the hydrocycidae, which is what I want to focus on today. So let's talk about where they live. Caddisflies in general can be found in every type of freshwater habitat globally, with the exception of Antarctica. And you can find them in riffle areas of streams, so a place with rapidly moving water over rocks with high dissolved oxygen levels, or you can also find them in pool areas with woody debris. Net spinners earned their namesake from the webs that they produce, these strong silk threads that they make into these cornucopia-shaped shelters. These nets are stuck to the sides of stable surfaces or strung between two pieces of cobble, and they act kind of like a spider's web as food that they'd like to eat, so organic material, small bits of plant matter, things of that nature, gets pushed along with the water and will get stuck in their net. Now, my favorite fact about the Hydrocycidae is they are considered ecosystem engineers. Now, this term usually refers to a species that modifies their environment to fit their own needs. I think the most famous example of an ecosystem engineer is the beaver, right? They like to gnaw down trees, move them around, flood different areas, create little dams for themselves, and they change their environment. So... The Hydrocycidae can also fit into this category because of how they attach their silk threads. Their silk isn't quite as strong as spider silk, but it can attach bits of gravel together that are as large as oranges and hold them together in rapidly moving water. So this stabilizes stream beds and reduces erosion of fine sediment during flooding events or storms. And when their silk is attached to the side of a rock in their little cornucopia-shaped retreats that they make, 
it actually slows down water velocity in those riffle ecosystems ever so slightly, which makes obtaining food in that ecosystem a lot easier for other aquatic insects. And in this way, they are very critical not only for the food system being a major source of food for freshwater fish, but they're also critical for other macroinvertebrates that live in that ecosystem as well.